This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus teaches, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You can never go back home again. Have you heard that phrase before? You can never go back home again. What does it mean? I think it generally means that if you try to return to the place that you remember from the past, that it won't be the same as you remember it. And I think that that's true. The last time, and it's been several years now, but the last time I went back to the home that I knew as a teenager in Iowa, everything had changed. You know, the sub shop down the street was closed and people had kids and, you know, it was everything had changed. And one of the problems, too, with returning back home is that the people that you knew back then still remember you as you were back then. And people seem reticent to know a new you, a changed you, a transformed you. You will always be you as you were back then to those who were there. It's tough to go back home again. You never return to the same place two times. Things change. The world changes. People change. And that's probably a good thing. This is not a static or stagnant world and not static or stagnant people that God has made, but ever-changing, ever-growing. But it's hard to intersect at just the right times. And the world is changing so fast. And we are changing too. And so if you spent time apart from a place or a group or a person, it is hard to reconnect with that place or those people. Reconnecting, reviving relationships can even reopen old wounds. And so it's hard to resume relationship. It's hard to return back home again. And as I prayed my way through our readings for today, the beginning of Lent, Ash Wednesday, I noticed right away all of the re words, R E words. Of course, our re words for Lent are repent and return to God. The prefix prefix re means again or back to. And so those words, return and repent, mean to turn back around or to feel penitent again. Really, they mean to get yourself back into right relationship with God as you are able. 
We get the sense that returning and repenting, these are ideas meant to turn our hearts and spirits and lives back toward God, the way that God had always intended our lives to be. And so in that way, we live into the relationship that God has always had planned for us and always offers to us in grace. But isn't that what Lent is all about? getting back in our spirits and back in our lives to right relationship with God. It is a season to practice repentance and returning to the God and the lives that God has called us to. We gather today and confess that we haven't always lived into God's gift of grace as God had hoped or dreamed that we would. We gather and confess that shaken and beaten by an always changing world that we have fallen short of the life that God had dreamed for us of perfect relationship. We gather today and admit that we are dust. I think it's the boldest thing that we Christians do all year round. It isn't the victory of the resurrection, another great reword. It is a humble thing that we say today. We are but dust and ashes. And someday our bodies will return to that, dust and ashes. Today on Ash Wednesday, we face the fact that our bodies are made of this limited stuff. And one day, the stuff that makes up our bodies, the dust that we are, will return to the earth and will resume as other people maybe, or other things. We are assembled as us in our bodies only for a short time, and then we are returned to the earth. And if it wasn't for the astounding grace of God, that would be that. Some things, the trees, for example, they return to dust one day too, but we are created body and spirit not just this temporary stuff that makes up our lives that fails and falters us over the years. We are made body and spirit, and that spirit is created to be in eternal relationship with God. And without God's goodness and blessing, we are but dust and ashes temporarily formed into a pair of ears and skin and hair and a beating heart that will one day stop. But thanks to the divine spark of a very loving God, we are so much more. Not because of how great we are or because of all the wonderful things that we've done, but because God is who God is and God is good and loving. And God's dream does come true. Yes, we are ashes to ashes and dust to dust, but that is not the end of the story. Our words for Lent are repent and return, but if we look through our readings assigned for today, we realize that God has different re-words in mind. God's re-words are reconcile, relent from punishing, restore and reward through the life and death and rising of Jesus Christ, God has rewritten our story into one of relationship and abundant lives full of vitality and meaning. Our Lenten journey, as we repent, remains an essential one as we consider how lost and limited we would be without the astounding grace of God. Beginning today and continuing for the next 40 days, not, continue, not including Sundays, we will walk the road with Jesus toward the cross to remember just how far God was willing to go to reconcile each one of our spirits back to God. And God did that because of love, not because we deserve it or even because we ask for it or because we always get it right, but because God is good. And so in the midst of the dust and ashes of Lent, we give thanks for God's goodness, and we dedicate ourselves to new and different ways of living, to honor Jesus, repenting and returning to the Lord our God, for he has saved us and not we ourselves. 
One of my favorite writers and theologians, Richard Rohr, famously said, we don't think our way into new ways of living, we live our way into new ways of thinking. And so whether we understand God's infinite grace or not, we can live more humbly like Jesus. We can follow the way that Jesus taught and showed us how to live during this holy season, to draw closer to him into his saving walk to Jerusalem. We can practice distancing ourselves from material pleasures and possessions. We can train ourselves at this time of year to refocus on God and to rely on God alone. And so today, as we receive the imposition of ashes on our forehead, we make a bold claim. We are but dust and ashes, but we are also spirit, always connected with God, and like God, always yearning to be back in perfect and right relationship. And we are living in a changing world, and it feels like we can never go back home again, but God is hard at work making sure that our true home is with God forever. And that is a relationship we can always return to. Thanks be to God.